Hello everyone. I yes, I had my hair done. It is amazing and I'm a rainbow and I'm the most excited person in the world about this. But I'm very fortunate to have the absolute most best hair artist in the world. He is a true artist at heart. He's just one, just one of the most kindest, most amazing, brilliant people I've ever met in my life and the most humble. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just kind and loving. I feel like a queen when I go see him. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to talk about the fat one. <laughs> How very damaging this world can be to our fragile egos as women. And it could be as men too. I see it more with girls than boys. So just want to talk about just some of the greatest singers in the world to me. You have Adele. You have Anna Nancy Wilson from Heart, um, uh, uh, Wilson Phillips, uh, Carney Wilson, I think that's what her name is. Uh, but just, I see, I think you know where I'm going with this, but when you look at singing groups and family members and people in general, some of them are labeled according to their weight. So when you have a singing group Heart, you have Anna Nancy Wilson, and one has probably always been labeled as the fat one. And then uh, Wilson Phillips, you have one has been labeled as the fat one in families. I, w I was labeled as the fat one in my family because I was a chunky monkey. I was fluffy. I wasn't obese per se. I think maybe in grade school, high school, I weighed about 180, 190-ish. I'm 6'1", but I, 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 I was not an athletic kid. You know, I like to eat and... Uh, we weren't too focused on, you know, going in for plastic surgery and having a six pack and whatever. So I want to talk about how very damaging it can be to be labeled as the fail. <laughs> and how difficult it is in your mind to break free <laughs> when you have been labeled as the fail and all that carries on into adulthood. For me, I was always curvy. I always had a butt and I always, whatever. And so because I was labeled as the fat one and I thought I was heavier than probably what I was, I would always wear baggy pants, the MC Hammer pants, long t-shirts, anything that would cover up my curves because I didn't want to bring attention to any of my flaws. So just, you know, anything baggy or loose or whatever. And I can't tell you how difficult it is knowing that you are simply labeled according to your body size and really not much else. It is really hard. And that, when it's stated to you, not only at school, but in your family, and you're called fat by family members who should simply just love you and care about you and maybe encourage you to eat healthier, it is really super hard to break free from that. And I, a couple of examples, one of my uncles, my mom's youngest brother would call me fat. Oh, we, you know, we, we go Christmas caroling and we go to McDonald's and I get a Big Mac and he's, he'd say, you don't need that. And I remember my grandma, uh, my dad's mom, who was very loving and very kind, she would make us a Chef Boyardee's pizza. And the sauce in the pizza was so good. It was in the can and you open it and you'd eat the cheese. And I'd say, Grandma, can I get that? And she'd say, well, you don't need that. And you know, you've, you have enough. Or she'd make a comment about my size. And, and so that's just the way it was. And I'm not saying she was cruel. And she didn't come right out and say, hey, you're fat, you're a fat ass or whatever. I was just, I was just kind of always reminded either intentionally or unintentionally, that I was the fat one in the family. My oldest sister would, I, you know, I had rolls, and I still have them today, but she'd say, why don't you get some butter for them rolls? And it's just, just really cruel. And I'm not trying to laugh about it, and I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm just sitting here today talking about it because it is very painful when it comes down to it. And I... I'm trying to maintain a sense of dignity, of compassion for myself, and of love for myself because 
it is very difficult when you are the fat one. And let's say you have a skinny sister. Well, nobody, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really have any skinny sisters. Everyone was pretty healthy. But I've never been in a family where I, I, I saw a girl teased or negated or harassed because she was too skinny. Maybe in certain families they say, well, she should eat more. Maybe a girl's naturally thin or naturally athletic and they say, well, she should eat more. Put some more meat on your bones. So I guess when I think about it and you go through both sides, you realize that most people that don't fit into a norm, whether if you're too big or too small, you don't fit the baby bear's conception of being just right. And I, I just want to say, it is already so difficult <laughs> to deal with it on your own when it's a, a struggle, but then to have it compounded, <laughs> um, I think. I, you know, I have two daughters and one was, you know, they're both my height and one was more like my size and more, one was, you know, a little bit more fluffy like the way I was when I was a kid. And I think, I, I pray to God, I never made her feel less than because of her size. I think for me, if you have a child who is gaining weight, you, you, you're concerned about their health and you know that it's just, more difficult in general as the, according to what you've been through with other kids and you don't want them to be teased or bullied or treated unkindly by other people in, in society because you know what it feels like. So all I know is that if we can stop labeling people as the fat one and move on to say this is this person has good qualities and this person has potential and this person is already special and I'm just going to wrap this up I, you know Adele who has since lost a ton of weight she looks completely different now not completely different but her body has you know she was on SNL but when she was heavier she'd say I, I, I I'm not here I, I she wasn't here about her weight, she was here to sing. And that's all she focused on was her singing. So she made a really valid point that she had a gift she was sharing with the world. And despite her weight, that's not what we should have focused on in the first place, but that's the way we do it. And that's because we allow society to dictate what we see, whether it's through Victoria's Secret, magazines, television shows, it's, it's so hard to get away from it because we are inundated with it. So that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope everyone's having a great, great, great day. And I'm just going to say I was the fat one, but I am no longer the fat one. You can call me Laura or Lori or <laughs> you can call me whatever you want, but I am no longer the fat one. <laughs> Fine with the way I am and that's the way it is. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye.